Hi, it's Richard here from the Siebel Hub with the latest in our series of What's New in Siebel IP 2016 videos. When we last spoke, I had just opened Siebel Tools for the very first time to observe the existence of the Workspace menu and Workspaces Explorer having successfully finished the Enable Workspaces script. So now we're going to take a little bit of a look at the typical process steps that you might encounter while working with a workspace. When you first look at the Workspace Explorer after installation, you will have only one base workspace called main, and it'll be read-only, and it'll be essentially your base repository. Anything you do will be a branch off main, so a child workspace or workspaces, if you will. There are different statuses to workspaces that control how we work with modified objects and how we report merging those objects back into the parent workspace. So now that we've seen that here in this particular environment I already have previously delivered some work, I'm going to go ahead and create a new workspace. I'm going to call it something different and add a short description. This new workspace will be created and opened for me and it'll be editable as we'll see in the top title bar of Siebel Tools and as well as on the top title bar, you can see it down here, the name and the status of the, of the new workspace, as well as the fact that it's currently in version 0. As you can see up here, after the slash. So now that we have a brand new workspace in version 0, and we have it as editable, we can go ahead and edit something and the edited, the modified object, will show up immediately in the Workspaces Explorer. If I select my Edit in Progress, notice the status has changed, if I select the particular workspace, I will be able to see the contents, in this case, one list applet that has been modified. It's important to use the title bar as your reference point since the Workspace Explorer doesn't necessarily select the thing that you're actually working in. Notice in the bottom left-hand corner, it's actually the cursor's on the wrong one. Coming back to something that you will know and love, if we have workspaces and we have different versions, you're probably going to want to compare them. So this sounds very familiar, I'm sure. It's pretty much like the compare objects or compare objects in repositories or compare archive files right down to the fact that when this comparison finishes, which will happen in just a few seconds, we get a traditional Siebel Tools Compare Objects dialog to compare this version of this workspace with this version of this workspace. Cool. So back to our little process, we now have a workspace, version 0, that's edit in progress. And what's the next step? Well, we could revert, or give up if you like, or we could uh, use either the ch compare or the checkpoint. I'm going to use checkpoint. Checkpoint marks the end of this particular version. It's like delineating a discrete package and saying, OK, this workspace called N1, version 0 is now done. When I click OK, you'll see that it's checkpointed. A checkpointed workspace you'll notice a, a variety of options, including Submit for Delivery, which has now become available. So checkpointing precedes submitting something for delivery. So it's one of the long steps. But before I submit for delivery, uh, which would place the workspace in read-only and not allow any further uh, changes, before I do that, I'm going to just demonstrate that with a checkpointed workspace, if I make further changes in the same workspace, they will now be in a new latter version of the same workspace. So my change that I made it originally is encapsulated in version 1, and the change I've just made is in version 2. So in this workspace, I have a total of two changes over two versions. In order to be able to actually go any further, I do still need to checkpoint my workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and checkpoint it now because having a status of checkpointed in your workspace is a prerequisite for the next step. And the next step prepares the way for delivering the contents of your workspace back into the parent. I'm going to submit for delivery, taking note of the heat of the warning 
I'm going to go ahead and submit for delivery and you'll see that it has a status of submitted for delivery and it is now completely read only. Finally, we have the deliver step. Deliver is where the action actually happens, meaning if I deliver, and of course I could use compare or I could undo submit for delivery, meaning if I deliver now, I'm really actually going to do a merge. I'm going to merge the contents of my workspace, which is a child of main, back into main. While this dialog is running, watch the status of main as well as the status of my workspace. Main, into which I'm merging, switches from checkpointed to edit in progress, and my own workspace shortly will become delivered, and main will then return to checkpointed. So the merging process updates the parent workspace. The end of this process should look familiar. It's a bit like doing a little mini IRM merge. And now you will notice that when I click done, in fact, you can already see it in the bottom left-hand corner, that following the merge of my work back into main, main itself has become checkpointed. In a sense, having merged back in to main, main now has an additional discrete set of objects that have been applied to it. And you can see the history of main and the history of any other workspace right here. from the original through the first changes a couple of days ago to the changes I just delivered a moment ago. As well as this rolling process of delivery of objects into workspaces, as you'd expect, this will have an effect on the tools menu in respect of compilation. And you won't be surprised to see that in, compile, in the compilation category, we now have a new command specifically the ability to compile workspaces. Tools compile workspace. In this case, the three objects I see are because I was looking at main version 2. If I open another workspace and return to the same menu, I see the contents of that workspace. So compilation gets its own new menu item in respect of workspaces. The functionality I've just shown you is, for a large part, also available in the Composer. And the Composer being the new set of uh, windows and dialogues in, in, for managing workspaces and working in workspaces in the client. I've opened the Workspace dashboard to demonstrate that I can see the different stages and the different visual forks and merges of my workspace, Zuz, and the history of deliveries, as well as in the form of small icons, uh, the number of additions, the number of subtractions, and the number of modifications. As well as this small graphical layout, which I can use at any time, I also have the list of objects that were changed. As well as the status of the workspace and the ability to open a workspace. Now, obviously, if I'm opening a read-only workspace, there's not much I can do apart from inspect it. But I can also view the merge details, which gives me the history of, OK, there was main 0, then main 1, and main 1 was forked off, and, and then we merged in to create main 2. So for the most part, so far, this is merely static data. It's um, interesting and enables me to follow what's going on. But I can also create workspaces directly here from the client. And because all of this is happening in a server database, there's no local involved, when I create the new workspace, not only is it now writable here in the client, but of course it's also visible. Sometimes the refresh window menu takes a little while. There it is. Oh, it's also visible in Siebel Tools. This is all happening in real time, if you will. Returning to the thin client, now that I have a writable workspace that is open, oops, I've opened the wrong one now. I'll go back and select the one that I just created. I have to be honest, it took me three weeks to work out that this was actually a clickable button there. It's so small. Now that I've opened a writable workspace, I can close the dashboard, and you'll notice the hammer. The hammer which lets me start working directly, because I'm using the Web Composer, now, when I click the hammer, several weird things are going to happen, um, and my demo will be pretty short. But you'll notice, if you will, 
that on the left hand side we now have a kind of wrapper window which enables me to select items and visualize repository information as well as add new list columns. I can also select items and I can also resize items so I'm working in a graphical composer. When I've finished I can sub commit the changes by clicking on the tick mark but that's pretty much where my demonstration ends for today. Um, we'll be back again soon, I hope, with another video detailing in much more lavish detail um, how to use this new graphical web composer. For the meantime, though, I wish you all a great day, and I'm sure we'll speak again soon.